Merry Christmas guys, it is Jalan with the Paradox Gaming Network and today I want to close out the year with another Ashes of Creation video. Today specifically I'm going to be bringing you just a bunch of random information, I'm going to talk about their accolades just a little bit. I'm going to compare their development to two other major games currently in development and then I'm going to give you the news on the class names. And then I'm going to clear up a little bit of a problem people uh, seem to be having with the subclassing. Uh, people are making a lot of assumptions and I want to kill those right away. And then I'm going to show you just a little bit of pre-alpha footage, the official footage from Stephen Sharif at Intrepid Studios. As always, here's all the different ways to get in touch with me. Discord is the easiest, Jalan hashtag 8446. As I like to keep everything transparent, 73 people have used my referral link. If you haven't signed up for Ashes yet, I'm going to ask you if you would please use my referral link. My plan in the future is to use all of the intrepid bucks that I get, cash those out, and help people who can't make their monthly subscription. Uh, in exchange for this, just by registering with my referral link or not, you'll be entered into a chance to win one of the Alpha Zero Keys. And Alpha Zero is going to resume in January uh, with limited testing opportunities. So, as I said, here's all the things we're going to talk about today. And the really big one I want to talk about is that Ashes of Creation won MMORPG's most anticipated MMO. And it's really no surprise that it would win this award since it is cooking on all burners. It is, it is, this machine is running very very quickly and they are producing better than their two biggest peers and that's really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about Chronicles of Elriria and I want to talk about Crowfall. Really what it's Ash's two biggest competitors and right here you can see from the Kickstarter backing Ash has absolutely crushed these two games in uh, Kickstarter. If you combine Chronicles and Crowfall they don't even match what Ashes got in uh, pledges. So that means Ashes has a really big pocketbook, really, really big customer support, really big following, and there's there's a reason why. So let's break down those other games. Chronicles of El Rio, it was announced in November of 2014. They did their Kickstarter about 18 months later in May. Uh, they were supposed to have other Demos, playables, they've missed a lot of deadlines. Their first playable is this month, December 2017. And truthfully, I don't really understand if they're calling their Minecraft-esque view of the game its first playable, or if they actually have a first playable. It's under a friends and family, so can't really ferret out those details. I will tell you that they were supposed to be in full alpha testing this month, and they missed that. And they're calling for a soft launch in quarter four of 2019, which is one year past when they said that they would launch. So Chronicles is already slipping dates left and right. Uh, we are finally hitting that friends and family. It's behind schedule. If you have followed this game in the news, you'll understand that Caspian can't quite figure out why companies don't want to read an eight page presentation about the appeal of COE. Well, the first thing I'd say is if you can't narrow it down to a page of bullet points, you probably don't really know what you're trying to sell. Really wise colonel that I worked for once told me that if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it thoroughly. And that's really what you got here, Caspian. You can't sell your product because you can't chop it down to a page. Uh, the big thing that I find ironic is that they originally said they wanted to maintain their independence and self-publish, and now they're shopping around for a publisher, and that sort of flip-flop is huge. That's like a huge change in your marketing strategy that leads me to believe that Soulbound may very well be out of money. They thought that they would get more backing. They thought that they would get further ahead, and the problem is Ashes just popped up uh, in the middle of their development and absolutely crushed them. Next game I want to talk about is Crowfall. This game was announced in 2015 in January, and they went right for the money. The, all their webpage was at first was a countdown, 
And at the end of that 40 day countdown, it took you right to their Kickstarter page. So we knew almost nothing about Crowfall. And I'm going to tell you, Crowfall is one of those games I did not back. I stayed the hell away from this game because, like I said, when your web page is a countdown and that countdown hits zero and you go to a Kickstarter, don't know enough about it. The first playable was in October of 2015. I don't really have a lot of information on that. The only thing I could find was there was a game article review and then I, I lost it. I didn't save it. I really wish I had. Uh, but some game reviewer was able to actually sit down with this game and put his hands on it. So I'm going to give them the checkbox for October of 2015. It was supposed to be an alpha testing last year. They missed that. It was supposed to soft launch this month. They missed that. Uh, the Alpha 1 was sold on their Kickstarter. And this is my big thing about why I always talk about Kickstarters and why I'm now hesitant to Kickstarter anything. Because if you always see the delivery date, they never make those dates. I don't know the last time a game has made those dates uh, at their final launch date. I think those are really optimistic that they have to put in for Kickstarter to green light the, the project. So, I know that they are now in pre-alpha 5. I don't really understand what that means. And I don't have an update for what their soft launch is going to be. And that's a direct quote. As early in 2018 as we can. You know, that's really not assuring. Now I'm going to talk about Ashes. It was announced in November of 2016. Uh, I will say that uh, I do have to go back to September 29th of 2016. That's my birthday, and that is the day that the Ashes of Creation logo you see right here appeared on their Facebook. But the first blog entry was in November of 2016, so we'll go ahead and fill that in as the announce date. They did their Kickstarter in May of the following year. Now here's the big one. Their first playable was at PAX West in September of 2017. Now, look at that. The Kickstarter was in May, and they brought a playable demo in September. That's huge. That is that is rapid pace for development. Keep in mind, the alpha testing started in December of 2017. Alpha testing started this month. It's alpha zero testing, but it's still alpha testing. They still put the game into the hands of some 1,200 players. They're aiming for a soft launch in quarter four of 2019. Now, I say quarter four 2019 because right now the official is before 2020. So I'm going to say quarter four 2019 because then nobody gets their hopes dashed. Right now, Ashes is of the three big games. They're the only ones on time with their development. And I'm going to show you some footage that's official footage that you can get off of the Twitch. Because uh, the Alpha Zero is under an NDA. So NDA, never discuss Alpha. But what I can show you is stuff that's already out there publicly. And then I'm going to give you the link. You go check it out yourself. Now, I know what people are going to say. I already know what you're going to say. You're going to put comments in be like, this game looks like crap. The combat looks horrible, blah, blah. Stop. Relax. You are looking at like six months worth of production days, and it's pre-alpha footage. Steven at Intrepid is making a huge outreach to the community and saying, I'm going to take you guys with me. I'm going to be there hand in hand with you as we walk through development. And that is some transparency we haven't seen like in 10 years, 15 years. So just remember, the footage you see later is non-optimized pre-alpha footage. To get into uh, the classes, big thing here is there are 64 different classes. Now, I know some people aren't in totally in love with some of these class names, and that's okay. You have the right to not love every single class name. I think that they did a very solid job. There are some that I would like to see switched, and once the holidays are over and uh, the Alpha Zero first round testing is done, I... I'm pretty sure Steven is going to be open to some, you know, creative suggestions. But here you go. If you were waiting on the 64 class list, this is it. Now to talk about subclassing, you take your primary class, this base class, 
and then you pick one of the other eight classes. And yes, you can double down. That's why you see the boxes uh, in red. You can double down on your class. So if we take a tank primary, and then we choose cleric as our secondary, we end up as a paladin. So again, you pick your main archetype, and this can never change. This is a huge one people have to hear over and over and over again, because I know when the game launches, somebody's going to say, I didn't know I couldn't change my primary archetype. You can never change your primary archetype. It is you are picking that road to walk down. You do get to pick some side roads because you have eight secondary archetypes. So you pick one primary, but you open up eight classes. And this can change. It just won't change on the fly. Don't expect to be in the middle of a dungeon and be like, oh, um, everybody else died. I'm going to... No, that's not going to happen. And really, the big thing is people need to understand how subclassing is unique to Ashes. Big games that have done subclassing in the past is like Final Fantasy XI, where you were a level 75 bard, but you were a level 37 white mage. So you opened up all of the spells on a white mage up to 37. Or you think about it when you have your multiple skill trees and you're like, I'm going to go... 39 points into this skill tree, but I'm going to go 6 into this skill tree just because there's some abilities I want to pick up. Not how it works in Ashes. Now, we have very limited data on subclassing, but what we do know is you do not get to pick abilities from your subclass. Your subclass or your secondary archetype adds tweaks to your ability. So the common example that's been used, so I'm going to use it, is that tanks, they have a rush skill that closes the gap between point A and point B and does damage when they arrive. Now a spell shield, which is a tank plus a mage as its secondary, instead of that being a charge, that might be a teleport. Now that's not a guarantee, but that's just the example that's been given. Uh, other examples that you, know, you could kind of work with is if you're a tank plus a cleric, so you're a paladin, some of your abilities might be healing abilities on yourself or they might bolster healing ability around you we just don't know anything solid yet but just keep in mind subclassing you do not get to take stuff out of your subclass and you do not get to change your primary class i'm going to say it a lot in all the videos to come so what i'm going to show you right now and then i'm going to close out the video with it is I'm going to show you some official Alpha Zero footage that is taken from that Twitch link. You can go and look at it right now. I just chopped down just a little bit of footage so that you could see it. Hopefully get you motivated to go watch the rest. Remember, this is pre-Alpha footage. This is non-optimized footage. It's not finished footage. It isn't polished. It's not neat. It's not clean. It's a taste. It's like if you go to your grandma's house and you know your grandma always puts on this great Christmas Eve dinner and you're like you're full for months and you go in the kitchen and she's like right in the middle of making everything, she's probably going to slap your hand if you try to taste anything because it's not going to taste right. Well, this is the same sort of thing. Steven Sharif, he's been nice enough to let us in the kitchen, let us take a look around at what's going on. But sometimes you got to remember, you don't want to see how the sausage is made. Anyway, guys, I'm going to close the video here and lead you right into this footage. Uh, it is Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope to see you in the new year. Can you jump with it? Oh, you can. Yes. <laughs> There's a bug uh, that we had a little bit a while ago. That, uh, hey, does Sergeant Reeve? Me. He's got something for us. Oh, he doesn't. All right, thanks, Sergeant Reeves. Worthless Sergeant Reeves. Remind me to fire him. <laughs> Deleted. Oh yeah, I like the orb. We adjusted the uh, <clears throat> drop tables, huh? So I just got a skill point. Are we all using orbs now? I got my sword. My trusty sword. Yeah, interesting. And all the environment guys just doing a fantastic job here. Oh, 
Oh, I need another point. I need to get to the next, uh, <coughs> I need to get to the halfway point of the level. Let's keep killing some monsters. So many rabbits. All right, I think I should have some skill points now. All right, I got a charge bolt. Oh, it's still on cooldown. Remember, that's a focus ability, so you're gonna have to have full focus to use it. Oh yeah. Forgot about that. Uh, Instance asks, will AOC have action combat as well, or just have targeting? Good thing about Ashes of Creation is that our skill progression system includes elements of both action targeting as well as tab targeting, so it's really customizable by the player based on their preference. Hey, you. Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Hit that subscribe button. Watch a couple of more videos. Go check out our website.